And now, in a change to our advertised programme, a special cinefilm spectacular as we marshal the troops of Terry Nation's army. Following our plea for home movies from the 1960s, we're delighted to have been offered an extremely rare piece of footage from the personal archive of Andrew Kerwin. In this episode, we'll dive into the Dalek Diaries from the 1960s to try to find out how a prop came to be wandering the streets of Oxfordshire on a strangely charitable mission. If you'd like to support our research, contribute ideas, and see clips and early videos, then check out the link in the description on how to join our Patreon. In June 2022, we were excited to receive an email from a Mr. Andrew Kerwin, who had seen our appeal on YouTube for any footage of Daleks from the 1960s. He said he had an 8mm home cine film of himself as a boy and a BBC Dalek. We were cautiously optimistic but often people mistakenly believe that homemade Daleks are the real thing, and even paid good money due to this belief. Thankfully, Andrew didn't keep us in suspense for long, and when the film promptly landed, we were absolutely thrilled to see his description was correct. Not only was this brand new footage, but it was a hitherto completely unknown Dalek publicity appearance. So when and where exactly was this taken? And where does it sit in the timeline of the Doctor Who TV series? We can immediately tell from the pupil in its eyeball that this dates from after the filming of Evil of the Daleks, in which this feature was added, in April 1967. The final episode of Evil of the Daleks had been recorded in June of 1967, and transmission concluded on the 1st of July. After this, the props were placed into storage, with one Dalek being retained by Shawcraft. However, it wasn't long before the props were called on again to make publicity appearances, and one of the first was at Andover Boys Secondary Modern, where there was a fundraising day for their new swimming pool. Despite the public's apparent diminishing interest in the Daleks, they were still a huge novelty and a big draw at events such as this. For this event, the Dalek casing that was delivered was a new combination of parts, with the top half of the prop we number 6, and the lower skirt section of Dalek number 1, that very first casing to come off the Shawcraft production line. The top half of the prop still carried its black dome that had been repainted for Evil of the Daleks. Also at the event was the pop group The Trogs, who were increasing in popularity at the time, having had several hits by 1967, including the UK number 2 hit Wild Thing. They were formed in Andover in 1964, and this connection to the area explains their appearance. The local papers were thrilled at the chance of picturing the pop group with a Dalek. The skirt pictured with the Trogs will become important to our story, but it's the next public appearance of a different Dalek which is a more relevant event to help contextualise the cine footage which we'll be examining shortly. The United Reformed Church Hall at Malden in Essex regularly held rummage sales to raise money for various charities. In June of 1967, the elders had decided a Dalek would make a great attraction to get more people to the sale, and so they contacted the BBC in the hope that they could borrow one. The BBC agreed, and the Dalek selected was the upper half of Dalek 6, paired with the skirt of Dalek 5. It was sent on a flatbed lorry covered in a tarpaulin. The son of the church minister, David Spate, remembers, A friend of my father's brought his reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder and recorded a good imitation of a Dalek's voice. Before the rummage sale began, we all got to meet the Dalek. I remember telling my sister that this can't be a real Dalek because we would have been exterminated by now. I wish there were photos of the people who turned up for the church rummage sale that day. As they walked in, the Dalek herded them to the tables where things were being sold. All it said was, You will obey, you will spend all your money, or you will be exterminated. Some kids cried, some adults looked disbelievingly at it, but the elderly folk, there for the bargains, seemed not to care much. 
I remember one old woman pushing the Dalek away so she could get to the sale table. I got to sit in it and was surprised at how DIY the inside was, a wooden plank to sit on and a push button to light up the eye. I wasn't strong enough to move it while inside, but I don't care because I met a Dalek. A family friend told us once that he was there and noticed a very old man sitting at the tea and cake stall who was heard to say, Daleks? No problem. We got rid of Hitler, so I'm sure we can deal with one stupid Dalek. This same Dalek casing was seen in use again a couple of months later. In September, the BBC were launching a colour television service from the Wenvo transmitter in the Vale of Glamorgan, South Wales. An open day was arranged at the site and crowds flocked to see the various exhibits and demonstrations the BBC had set up. The attractions included a colour TV theatre and Dalek 6.5 was useful in clearing the congestion that had built up there. BBC engineer Alan Davies was on hand to show how the Dalek was operated. A short 8mm film of the event can be seen here. Wenvo wasn't the only transmitter site to have an open day that month. The Tackle Neston transmitter near Norwich was also being upgraded to transmit colour and a similar event was held on the site. A report suggests that two Dalek props attended, and a photo confirms at least one of them was a prop made from Dalek 1's shoulders and the skirt of Dalek 7. So if this photo shows the top of Dalek 1 and the bottom of Dalek 7, then where were the inverse parts at this same time? Well that's where the wonderful new cine film comes in. The film supplied by Andrew Kerwin shows that the prop hired for his occasion has a top section built mostly from components of Dalek number 7. This was first used in the chase as a kind of stunt Dalek, being buried, drowned and smashed. But it was later drafted into service as a fully working prop in Power of the Daleks and then in Evil of the Daleks. But the neck has a distinctive feature which shows that it does not belong to the rest of Dalek 7. The block on the middle neck ring was a conspicuous repair that had been added to Dalek 2 in the autumn of 1964 and was seen on TV from the Dalek invasion of Earth onwards. The skirt section of Andrew's Dalek is that of Dalek number 1, the first prop ever created by Shawcraft, last seen with the Trogs. This can be confirmed due to the bolts on the side panels. It was explained to us that the Dalek was present to attend the St Giles Fair this event is normally held on the Monday and Tuesday following the first Sunday after St Giles Day, which is the 1st of September. This allows us to narrow down the date quite precisely to either Monday the 4th or Tuesday the 5th of September 1967. The footage was shot in Oxford, and the shop front in the background, Zacharias and Company Waterproofers, allows us to determine exactly where the Dalek is. Although the shop had a front entrance at number 26 on Corn Market Street, the footage showed a second entrance around the corner, which places the Dalek in the courtyard of the church on Ship Street. The church in question is not called St Giles, but is called St Michael at the North Gate. This courtyard was originally behind a high wall, later replaced by railings, which were then removed entirely as seen here. Today it's enclosed by railings again. The old shop door, seen here, remains unchanged in 50 years, on a building which is considerably older than that. The Speedwell Cleaners exterior, seen here, had been restored to its original 15th century appearance in 1951, with Zacharias and company restored a little after that, and it's currently a Pret-a-Manger. The footage allows us to make some observations about the condition of the prop. Most notably, the middle disc on the eye stalk has been broken since its last use in studio five months earlier. Also, one of the slats on the right-hand side is broken in half. This shot offers a glimpse of the west side of Corn Market Street. The footage was presumably taken around 4pm in the afternoon, based on the children appearing in school uniform. The film is taken by Andrew's sister, and the lady in the hat is their mother. Andrew tells us that it did start to rain at one point, which gave away how the Dalek was being moved around, as little footprints followed the Dalek casing. We can probably assume that the Dalek is collecting funds for the church. The footage here is presented in the order in which it was sent to us, which would almost certainly have been the order it was shot. 
Making cuts in cinefilm was relatively simple with a pair of scissors and glue, but it wasn't a common practice for home movies unless you were a particularly ambitious filmmaker. It's unclear whether there was any kind of official operator for the occasion, but the last two shots of the reel shows that schoolboys were lucky enough to have a go inside the prop themselves. Possibly the man helping out here is who was inside the rest of the time. We are extremely grateful to Andrew Kerwin for sharing this wonderful 1 minute and 48 seconds of footage. After the event was over in Oxford, the Dalek was returned to the BBC, but was soon called into action again, being dispatched to BBC Cardiff a month later in October of 1967. But for this next outing, the Dalek from Andrew's footage was no longer whole. There were two Daleks in attendance at Cardiff, and further swapping had taken place. The skirt from the cine footage was now paired with the shoulders of Dalek 2, which has a distinctive inverted V shape to its collar at the front. It was joined with the neck of Dalek 7 as it had been for a year since the recording of Power of the Daleks. It sported a dome still painted black from its last TV appearance in Evil of the Daleks now six months previously. The top half from the cine footage was now placed on the skirt of Dalek 2, meaning that the whole of Dalek 2 was present in Cardiff even though the parts were shared around. The pair of Daleks were in South Wales to star in the BBC Week show put on at the Sophia Gardens Pavilion. As with previous BBC Week shows in 1966, there were demonstrations of makeup, TV techniques and stars of the day appearing. Both props were mobbed by children as they made their way around the displays. The following month, on November 13th, 1967, three props were in attendance at the Blue Peter Studios at Lime Grove. Contrary to appearances, this did not form part of an episode, but was merely a photo call for the forthcoming Designer Monster competition. Here, the Haas from the cine film were reassembled to create Dalek 7-1 again. That winter, the combination of parts that made up Andrew's prop made its last known appearance. In December 1967 and into January of 68, several Doctor Who monsters appeared at the Daily Mail's Boys and Girls exhibition at Olympia, London. The Dalek prop, sadly not featured in this newsreel footage, was once again the combination of the top of Dalek 7 with Dalek 2's neck and the bottom of Dalek 1. This time the iris had no pupil. Although this was the last time the two halves were combined, it's not quite the end of the story. During a clear out of props, the BBC junked several bits of Daleks, including, sadly, the skirt of Dalek 1, never to be seen again. But there's better news about the upper section. In Patrick Troughton's last ever episode, the finale of the War Games, a Dalek was shown on screen during his trial, and it was the same set of parts as seen in the cine film still showing that unsightly neck block. The shoulder section, and possibly the dome too, were painted gold to become the leader Dalek in Day of the Daleks, before becoming grey for the rest of the 1970s. And it remained in use right up until its final screen appearance in Remembrance of the Daleks. But it re-emerged again in 2011 when it was purportedly available for purchase on the Channel 4 dealer's programme Four Rooms. The man chaperoning the prop, Mark Donoghue, apparently couldn't persuade the dealers to part with the £50,000 price tag that was being asked for. By this time, most of the prop was created from parts dating from the 1970s and 80s, and it had been fully reconditioned, which removed a lot of its history. But with the shell of the shoulders at least, it had a part that dated back to the 1960s. It wasn't quite there at the very beginning of Dalek history in 63, but it was one of the few components that had survived from 65 to 88 and beyond.